Hello and welcome to week 26 of a 52-week series for the Web Pro and what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth, and this being the middle week of the 52-week series, week 26, I'm starting a mini-series for setting up web farms. And so this week I'm starting, uh, in fact, I'm doing something a little bit different, and I originally I was kind of starting to prep for this and setting up a domain and I figure you know what let me actually cover this as one of the lessons so what I'm doing here is I'm going to set up a domain and join a server to a domain when you're done you won't necessarily be an Active Directory Pro I'm not able to get into that much depth in this much time but I figure this will be a good way to at least have an introduction if you haven't been a person that's been involved in setting up domains or if you want to set up your own test lab. So it's just a good walkthrough for the web administrator just to see how you would set up a domain. It's actually pretty straightforward. And so I figured, let me actually do it. And second, the other thing I'm doing different than I've done before is um, before I was working on a single machine and had already logged into the machine. This time I'm actually going to show you Vastnet. And just a little bit of a shameless plug, this is a company that I've co-founded uh, with Jeff Widmer. And the two of us have been putting together, basically this is targeted for the Web Pro to be able to take a machine and to instantly be available to use it. And so I'm actually going to use this end to end and it'll give you just a little bit of an idea as to what the VastNet service is too. And it works excellent for a test lab. So let's take a look and we'll show you what we do. So I've already logged in and I'm a member, but that's a pretty quick process. I'm going to go to the catalog and I like this first one, the General Purpose Workstation. And so it has a lot built in. So I just said start. And it's going to start the machine. Uh, it's very rapid. It just grabbed a brand new machine that I haven't used before. And so that's done. So let's edit the details. And we're going to call this our, let's say, our Web Pro Series. And we'll call this the Domain Controller, which also is going to be our, our first node. And I'm going to set this so it, it auto-pauses after two hours of inactivity. So it doesn't auto-pause while I'm working on it. But, so it also saves money by... Uh, stopping when I'm not using it. And so let's go into this machine. And it just downloads an RDP file with the password that I set up is already injected into the machine. Okay, and we're in. You can see how quick that is just to grab a brand new machine to set up a test lab, a demo lab here. And what I want to do is working on this first machine, then this has some install details if you're ever curious as to what was done on this machine. And it's really focused for kind of the, I admin, uh, the IS administrator. So all this is all installed on it. And so what we do, we're going to turn this into a domain controller. And so I'm going to say DC promo. That's the command to start the wizard from the command prompt. Okay, and so now we hit next and a lot you can read. Because it's a brand new domain, we're able and we're going to create a new domain because we're not joining to an existing forest. And we're going to just call this contoso.int, int for internal. Hit next. And even though I told it it wasn't, it's a new one, I guess it doesn't believe me here, so it's verifying. Okay, and so the forest functional level is, in this case, it's a brand new domain, and I know that all the members are going to be R2. And there's some descriptions, really, to talk about those. So I'm going to jump right to this, but uh, there may be reasons for compatibility. You would use a backward compatible option there. And uh, a couple here, the global catalog, for example, is required. But we do want to set up a DNS server, so I'll say next. And it mentions uh, a description here. Pause this and read it if you want regarding the DNS server setup. So we'll say yes to continue. And some default paths. And these are all fine. So next to continue. And I need to put a password in. And finally it wants to verify everything. We can export the settings if we want to. So we'll set next. And now it's working away. And I'll say reboot on completion. And so I'll check this. And so now in two or three minutes this should be done. And so I'll come back shortly. And while this is rebooting, I'll just give a little bit more information here. The catalog allows a number of different machines, for example, Internet Explorer 6789, uh, Orchard, Web Matrix, and actually this is one just for, for me, so ignore that. 
logged into my profile, but Web Matrix RTM, we have uh, the base images for all the different operating systems. We have a SharePoint and Small Basic for kids getting started in programming. And so a number of different choices are available here for us. And you can just grab any of those machines. And same thing, you're in those machines in usually like 10, 15 seconds, extremely fast. So great, makes it excellent for a demo lab of this, of this sort. So now I can go back to my machine and into the Web Pro one that I've already rebooted here. And you can see it looks like it's well applying settings you can see here on the little screenshot. And I'll just refresh a couple times. And in the future we do hope to actually have a domain environment completely set up with a domain controller and a couple member servers so that you don't have to do this. It's already pre-set up for you, which will make it even easier yet. Uh, imagine just being able to have a test domain available in under 20 seconds. Makes it pretty convenient for any kind of testing and work that you do. And I love this for a lot of testing and troubleshooting that I do. If I'm curious as to, let's say I'm responding to something in the forums or I just need to test something myself, I just grab one of these machines and the pricing is based per minute. So it's actually possible to use a machine and pay 20 cents or something, you know, very insignificant to use a machine for just a few minutes. So it's, it's pretty impressive. Okay, so this is done. So we'll say connect, grab the RDP file, and actually notice now it doesn't log in. And that's because uh, the VastNet service isn't used to this being a domain. It tried to get some stuff for us, but we do a dot slash. Actually will work fine. And we'll log into the domain for the first time. Now, uh, that, that's done. It's now a domain controller. You can see here in administrative tools, we have various things here. Active Directory users and computers. And you can see the domain is set up here with the default users. Everything. Now, and it brought in a couple of the users over here by default. Scott and Service Admin, for example, it brought in as an AD user. So let's go and add our member server. And we'll do that. Go to the catalog again. And we're going to go to General Purpose Workstation. And we're going to start the virtual machine. Again, it's setting this up for us. And it did this, you know, this time was, again, probably like six, seven, eight seconds. So we'll connect. Actually, before I connect, let's rename this. So we're going to rename this to Web Pro. And we'll just call this Web 02. And we'll change the autosave settings here. And now we can connect. And notice you can do different side. We want full screen and stuff like that. You can do that just before you hit the connect button. So we log into the new machine that was just made for us. And just the first login here just takes a few seconds, not too long. And so now what we want to do is we want to join this particular computer to the domain. And so to do this, we really have two steps. One, we need to update the DNS server. So this one needs to use the other machine as its DNS server. And then the second thing we need to do is actually join it to the domain and then reboot. So the first thing we can do, we can go into our network. I'll right click on the network, go properties, and change adapter settings. So we have this one here. And go to TCP IP first four. And now we need to know the IP of the other one. So we can get that, our domain, we do an IP config, and we use the internal IP, so 10.245.10. So we'll do this, 10.245.10, and we'll clear this off. So now it's using as its domain controller our other machine. Of course, we don't have redundancy. If it fails, this one doesn't have a DNS option available to it, so it's a critical part. And normally in a real environment you're going to set up two domain, two or more domain controllers. So this is all redundant. If it patches or fails or anything else, no big deal. So now we've set up the domain, the DNS, and so what we'll do now is we want to right click on my computer, hit properties, and we're going to go into change settings for the computer, and norm notice right now it's set up to use a work group and the workgroup name is workgroup. So instead for the domain, we're going to say contoso.internal. 
Now this is going to recognize it because we added, we made that DNS setting. If we didn't make that DNS server setting, then of course, you know, it has no idea on where to find this. But now it does. And so now I need to put in my authorized username there. That's allowed to join it to the domain because you can't. If you're just a generic user, you can't join to the domain. And it says welcome to the domain. We'll hit OK. And you want to restart? And we'll say restart now. And we're done. So that's rebooting. You can see now it, it switched to the other machine, which is right behind that one. And if we're curious, we can hit the refresh button here. And it, just in this little window, it'll give it a, a rough idea as to where we are. We should get the black screen here. And yeah, so you can see here. It's black so far. And then so now it says applying your settings. Okay, so that took maybe maybe about a minute, something like that. So we can connect. Actually, I can use the existing one if we want, or connect again this real tiny file. And we'll connect. Log in. And we now have set up a domain. And again, uh, you know, there's we're not doing anything complex here, apart from making the first machine a domain controller, and the second machine we have it joining it. And so a couple ways to tell that it's joined the domain is we can go right-click on computer, go to properties, and you can see here that we're part of the domain, contosa.int. And if we were to set up any kind of local permissions, we can go to a particular folder. In this case, let's say users. I'm not going to really set it. And we go to the security. And if we add, notice in the locations, and I can actually just hit escape here, and you can see the server name or the domain name either are available and you can actually find a local user or a domain user to grant permissions to any resource here in the environment. So this is actually setting us up for the, f the next few weeks. Uh, next week I want to cover DFS and we're going to be using DFS for a couple things here with the shared web farm and we're going to be covering the shared configuration and we're going to be talking about our front end load balancers and we're going to, in particular, the Microsoft's IS ARR application request routing. It'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to the next few weeks here. So this sets us up and gives us the environment for DFS for next week. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.